Yeah, thank you, and thanks for having us here today. Uh, my name is Jonas Gamaliadsson, and I am at the University of Kodde in Sweden. I'm a researcher, and I want to present uh, some results from a paper that we published in the e-journal of e-democracy and open government. And uh, after that, Thomas Persson, one of the co-authors, we will give some practical experiences and recommendations concerning use of open source for web analytics, and particularly the Matomo project. So, um, the motivation for this study is that when we use web analytics, and especially those that are proprietary and hosted by global IT companies, we can get different kinds of problems. For example, from a legal perspective, you all know about the GDPR and the Schrems ruling in July 2020, and uh, that makes it prob problematic from a personal information point of view to, to transfer data to third countries. And I should mention that the data collection for this study was made six months after the court ruling on the 16th of uh, July, so keep that in mind. And also we have the issue of locking to proprietary technologies and suppliers, uh, which makes it uh, difficult to, to make an exit, for example, and that you become very dependent on a specific supplier for the deployment and so on. So I will show that at the end of my part of this talk, that the deployment options are better for open source software, of course. And uh, by through use of OSS, we can avoid such issues and uh, create conditions for a more, more sustainable uh, solution for web analytics. And also we need to uh, 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 be cautious when it comes to the community, because if we have a, a non-active project no matter how good the code is, it's not uh, long-term sustainable. So that's an important thing to look at with prior to adoption. And Matomo is a widely uh, deployed project for web analytics, and that, that, that was the reason for why it was chosen for this study. So the overarching goal here is to characterize use of and engage with, with the OSS project for web analytics. And two parts in the study was to first characterize use of such technologies in Swedish government authorities. So we looked at all the complete set of 253 Swedish government administrative authorities, Statliga förvaltningsmyndigheter in Swedish. <laughs> yes, and also government enterprises, Statliga verk. And the second part was to look at the engagement with a specific Matomo project over time. And for the first part, we used a tool uh, called BuildWith to identify uh, the different technologies used on web pages for these uh, government authorities. And for the second part, we mined uh, 61 GitHub source record repositories for Matomo that were deemed to be relevant for this study. So we cloned those repositories, we extracted Git logs, and mine for author contributions. So I will be showing some graphs where we have uh, author contributions um, shown, and we also use LinkedIn to establish uh, affiliations and uh, uh, so on. And then we use some scripting. So uh, this table, sorry for the somewhat small font, shows that uh, Google Analytics and uh, Google Global tag star, uh, Site Tag are dominating here. We have 79% of the, in total, 253 um, uh, government authorities that use um, Google Analytics. And it's very much US-based technologies here as well, and Matomo and Matomo Tag Manager are the only uh, open source software licensed uh, solutions that we identified. So there were in total uh, 36 technologies. Four of the government agencies did not have any website, I should mention that, and 37 of the 253 did not use web analytics. And several, uh, sorry, one government authority can use several technologies. Um, yes. And we also showed the headquarter for each of these technologies uh, in the second column there. Okay, so, yes, so this is to sum up. 79% using Google Analytics, clearly dominating, and 36, 
th sorry, 34 of the 36 are proprietary technologies. A clear U.S. dominance amongst the providers of these technologies uh, has been observed. And as I mentioned, oh, it's only Matomo and Matomo Tag Manager that were identified as open source uh, software technologies. Yes, and uh, 16 specific government authorities at the time were uh, identified to use Matomo amongst these uh, 253. And uh, six of these used only Matomo. Uh, there have been frequent releases uh, in this project. This shows the number of stable releases over time. Uh, and I should mention that it, it was first PIWIC, uh, it was called PIWIC in, initially, and then 2018 uh, Matomo appeared as, as uh, an, the name for the project. Yes, so in average, 10 stable releases each year. There have been approximately 48,000 author contributions in total for the project by about 800 different contributors. And for the remainder of this study, we, we focused on those who have contributed at least 10 contributions. And that uh, sums up to 83 contributors that provide 88% of all contributions, actually. So, uh, some colorful diagrams that will follow here. Uh, and the color shows uh, the number of author contributions. So, red is a lot of contributions. So, we can see that there are some uh, companies here, uh, they are listed in uh, descending order in terms of number of author contributions. So the top uh, companies here, we, we see different companies and the company type, SME for example, and then the country uh, where they reside. Uh, the top three have a business offering that's very closely connected to the uh, Matomo project and then we have a number of other uh, companies, we see Amazon at uh, place 20 at the bottom, but we also have below uh, the top 20, we also have Intel, Google and Apple who have contributed to this project. And I should mention that uh, the top three uh, contribute 66% of all uh, contributions in this project, and the top 10, 91%, and these top 20, 97% of all contributions. And at the bottom, there is also a division between the first five years and the last, uh, sorry, the first nine years and the last five years in the project. And uh, we can see that, that it was a larger number of contributions during the, the sorry, number of organizations during the first nine years. Uh, if we look at uh, a, co a compilation by um, Type of affiliation, we, should, we see that SMEs and micro enterprises dominate. So SMEs, that, that are companies that are 10 through 200 employees, micro enterprises are 1 through 9 in this study. So those contribute actually together 96% of all contributions. And larger enterprises, LE, uh, they only contribute 3%, so it's very much driven by smaller and medium-sized enterprises. And here we can see the different uh, nations. Uh, so New Zealand uh, contributes roughly 50%, and that's where these uh, companies reside, their headquarters reside. So, um, and European uh, countries are approximately 40% of all contributions. Yeah, so, uh, to wrap this up, conclusions, so we, sh we show that uh, an overwhelming majority of the uh, Swedish governmental authorities at that point in time when we did the study used proprietary technologies and specifically Google Analytics uh, was very popular. But we also noticed that uh, some of the uh, government authorities used Matomo. Yes, and the second part we can say overall it has been a sustainable uh, community of many years and also that some of these companies have a, have a business uh, closely related to Matomo and so on. And also, as I mentioned initially, we have clear um, advantages with Matomo since it is both developed in the open and you can deploy it both 
internally and externally. So you, you can have your own IT department uh, host it and deploy it, but you could also have external consultants. I think Thomas will talk a bit about that, that can help you with that. Whereas for Google Analytics, you're totally uh, uh, left with one provider. So less uh, freedom of choice, would that mean? So with that, I will leave the scene to Thomas. And I also want to mention that this was uh, the funded or financially supported by the Knowledge Foundation, Koko Stiftelsen. Yes, so Thomas. All right, so I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, what we do around Matomo and probably mostly how we do it because I think that is, at least for us, super important. Um, so we're, we're a company called Digitalist. Uh, this is me. Uh, I've been, I work as a product owner for our Matomo offering. So we basically build a platform where we host Matomo uh, in, in a private cloud in Sweden. Um, I'm also a Matomo consultant. I'm also a contributor to the Matomo project. Uh, if you want to contact me later on, feel free to do so. So at Digitalist, we love open source. And you've probably seen this a hundred times from a lot of companies. But I want to distinct this. What we actually do is that we leave open source. So what do we mean by that? Uh, because I think it's a big difference. It's by loving open source, we all do that, right? It's free, we can download it, we can use it. It's yeah, we can, we can build our products and, and offerings around open source. So living open source for us means that as a company, we, we've been actively contributing to open source for over eight years. And I think that's quite unique, and uh, being an IT vendor in the Swedish market. Um, that means like we've been doing contributions to core uh, to products like Drupal and Matomo. Um, we've been releasing more than 50 add-ons to these uh, products during the years. We've uh, published thousands of blog posts and screencasts. Um, published two books, more than 100 conferences like this we've been out talking to about what we do, sharing knowledge. Um, we participate in design projects, for instance. So, so we, we kind of try to live with the products that we live on and contribute to them. And I think that's super important. Um, and it's also a foundation as a company we get job applicants from all the whole world, actually, because we do this. So it's like, it's really positive because we can build solutions based on software that is free and open. But it's also great for us as a company because it provides us with good, good people. Um, so what do we actually do? Well, we provide open source as SaaS services. So Matomo or Apache Superset are two products that I work a lot with. Um, and what do we mean by a SaaS? Um, I'll talk about that. But all right, so what, who do we help? We, the public sector in Sweden has been heavily, uh, we, we've been doing a lot with them the last years. So this is basically, if you're not a Swede, the main public and the biggest public organizations in Sweden and others. We're not like dedicated to them, but, but they've been early adopters when it comes to open source. So, uh, a SaaS service. Well, you're using a software like Matomo or maybe previously Google Analytics. You're logging into this uh, uh, cloud service. And to do so, under the uh, surface, we have infrastructure, platforms, we need to take care, care of updates, you, you all listen to the keynote, the spaghetti under the, under the surface. This is our, one of our core deliveries to take care of. And with 20 years of experience of open source, we learn the hard way, <laughs> uh, so we kind of do this uh, in the cloud. We use open source technologies like Kubernetes and stuff to, to do this. And, uh, yeah. and on top of that, we provide uh, a lot of uh, extended functionality. So, but I think the most important part is that we help our clients to move from uh, software to systems. So what do I mean by that? Well, Matomo is a software. You can download it, but a system is when it's applied within an organization. And, and that's a huge difference. So this is where most IT departments fail, because they do this. 
they run open source, they maybe take backups, and they read the guides on how to install the software. On top of that, you need to kind of adopt the software to match what you're doing. You're building an analytics platform for your organization. Matomo has, just as an example, 200 configurations that you can adjust to, to create it to, to whatever you need. And on top of that, you need to use it as an as a end user. So that means that we, we have the SaaS providing the, the basics and the updates. We have support. And then on top of that, we have application expert consultants that can go out and help organizations succeed with implementing the software. So I think this is the, the key for us when we deliver open source. Uh, and then we talk about open source. So what do we mean by that? Well, open source means that it's a sustainable model for purchasing or open source software. And for us, that means that we need to provide software that is not only really open, but it has only, you need also need to be able to run it on an open platform. So our clients uh, are never being locked in. Potentially, we could build a lot of features on top of Matoma and call them our own. We actually do have a few of those, but very few. Uh, so that means that any day you can basically just take home the application and run it, and run it internally. Even though it's a hard work to do so and get to the same level of, of the standards that we do, uh, but this is the way we think about open source applications, that you should be able to take the data home and take the code home and run it. So we kind of build Kubernetes uh, instances that we provide as open source if someone is interested in the forum. Uh, what's oh, this going, this going backward, nice. So, finally, if you're uh, asking an intern, external vendor to help you with open source, not only Matomo, make sure that they contribute to the project. Ask if they offer services beyond just hosting it, because that's not the big thing, you know. Succeeding with, with software, creating systems is something else. Uh, and also make sure that you can own the data. And then for privacy, of course, make sure that you are using European data centers, that you have subcontractor agreements, uh, subprocessor agreements, uh, that all employees that have access to data are European citizens, and make sure that no data whatsoever is shared with any other part. All right, that was basically me. Uh, or if you, you want to run it, you can of course contact me as well. Uh, so, so that's me. So, finally, some questions? Or is time out? <laughs> There's time for questions, right? Mm -hmm. One quick question. Uh, the previous slide said uh, make sure that your the old employees with data who's an EU citizen. How do you handle consultants then? Because a lot of consultants are from other regions than Europe. Yeah, I mean, basically we can't provide uh, our promises if they have access to the data centers or to the data. So it, it's, that's what, the, I mean, the sub-processor contracts, it, it won't be possible to be honest. Uh, Is there any other question? No? Well, yeah. I guess that was right here. Thank you very much. No, we have a question here.